Hey guys, uh, Seth with man, and here today we'll be reviewing our Kuz, um, SRM Kuzuworthy um, Sporti Sportizion. Now, let's play a game. Which one of them is the um, SRM Kuzuworthy Sportizion? Is it this one? Or this one? Choose this one. You are incorrect. This is the SRM Cruiser Worthy, the base model, which somehow is bugged out and can only go 15 miles per hour instead of the promised 40 miles per hour. So it's bugged out. It's bugged out. This is the Cruiser Worthy um, Sporty Sporty Zeon. Um, it only makes like the, the other one makes like. 7 horsepower, this makes like 10 times the horsepower. It says it could go 115 or 113. But I believe, like, I test drove it and, it, like, somehow, like, in fourth gear, it stays, like, at the rev line at around 4000 RPM. It's, like, stuck there. So I don't know, it's bugged out, kind of. So if it was able to, like, rev higher than 4000, so, like, be able to reach, then it would be, um, able to reach 100 and 13 miles per hour, whatever. But let's just go on the mud bog and see if you can go mudding. Right now, this seems promising because the last one was just underpowered. This is just faster than it, and it's barely in first gear. Well, well I mean, kind of got stuck. First of all, it's a flat four, and it's no longer the inline three, but a flat four, so it's lower and gives it a better um, lower center center of gravity. But at that expense, like the cylinders are underneath the water. Only thing is just the carburetor. The carburetors are safe, but not the cylinders. So this one has like in the inline three. So let's go to the inline three. I can't even go any closer, so I'll just have to peek like that. It, like, so small, but like, it's tall enough so the cylinders won't be com completely submerged. This got completely, this got completely submerged. So let's go on the elemental strips. Still retains the good, the good suspension setup, though it's like 300 pounds more heavier. Oh god, we're slipping. That's something that I would not expect from this car, slipping. I mean, it's doing well on coarse sand. The brakes are so small. Like, I'm used to like 300 or like 400 millimeter brakes. This only has like 160 millimeter brakes. So I'm not... It's not too bad of a change, knowing that I don't need too much braking. But to be honest, I could have uh, made the rear brakes more smaller, like five millimeters smaller, and I could have saved a little bit of weight. Does it still have the same good old um, turning radius? We'll see. Yep. Super, superb handling, and more power, and twice the price, but for twice the price, I mean the Bugle has what, compared to it, like 27 horsepower? This is literally drifting. The engine was well built by me, uh, of course. I think the reason why it has better handling, like still retains handling, is because of the flat four built in. The flat four has lower center of gravity, so it's probably helping it with a better. Let's see. Now, we wouldn't have gone this far if I didn't like drove on it. But if we had four x four, it may be helping, but. 
I'll just drag it out. Because this neither has this does this, this doesn't have um four by four. This doesn't have enough horsepower, and it's not high enough. Well, just low cars that have been able to do this. But here's the thing: it's basically all those three. It doesn't have a lot of power. It doesn't have four wheel drive. It's like a rear wheel drive, and it's really low on the ground. So. It may not be a fair advantage because other cars have more horsepower, more height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's turn it on. I got out. All I had to do was just rev it, rev the engine, and like, and go into first gear, so it'll be um, easier to get out. Now let's go on the sand. Why am I- why do I keep pressing the windows button? I don't know. X and- the Z and X are close to the windows button, so kind of. This is probably like fast- see, it's, it beats its um, supposedly top speed in just second gear. That's what it should have been. Eskimos may not like it because it has more horsepower, it's more uncontrollable. Okay, we're, we're going to start in fourth gear. So it'll be more torquey. Oh god, we're slipping. Not even like starting off with help. Eskimos would be slipping on the ice if they were on this. Good handling characteristics though. I can assure you. Assure you. I can assure you that this is a really good handler. See, it has a tight circle. Like, look how tight that cornering is. Like, this has a good thing in it. It's able to handle very good. Oh, it has... Oh, God. When you get to, to speed, it'll, like... Just start... Understeering and oversteer. Oh, 
thousand out. It's like only reaching like under one thousand, under two thousand. See so for this, it's able to reach its supposedly top speed in like second gear, which isn't supposed to happen. This gets its top sphere, uh, speed. Let's see how they sound. Idle. Yeah, revving. But let's hear what this sounds like. Now let's go underneath and try and see if it can get similar. How can I can't? I can go super close here. Yeah, I can't go close at close up here. Whatever. Let's just try. Wait, it took a it took some time to just to start. See, it's just like. Let's start it, and you'll see like it's just start trying to start up. See, it's trying to start up. Like, the engine was like, like, you had to like press the gas, so it didn't like, it'll like stop trying to start up. Like, I had to like, like, I pressed the engine on, on the on and off engine button, like two times. Like, and then that like stopped the ignition from, so like, I, I press it one time, and then like, I press it again to like stop the, stop the car from stopping, and then actually like, having the engine running. It's a nice melody, but like... But it sounds like a motorcycle, and that's okay. This, like, when I was close up, I saw that the chassis was, like, shaking. And I realized that you can see the frame underneath. Underneath the car. So let's just hear it. Let's just see it one more time. As you see, um, the engine is very loud and it has sustainable ability to be powerful. The engine is powerful, but it's a like limited, like the year is 1946, so back then four cylinders did not make a lot of power. As you see, it's still a great car for $10,000 in 1946. Okay, Google.
if a car was um, worth $10,000 in 1946, how much would it cost in 2020? $141. You can say it's really expensive at the time. Okay, Google. How much is $4,000 from 1946 in today's money? $56,000, so I made this car like more than twice than it was before, and horsepower inflation is not a thing, but like, but if you like had like better stuff, better equipment, like instead of like carburetors, we, if we could have like direct injection, better fuel I guess could be a factor, and more efficiency of engine then I guess it could be good. But now we're going to go to the flight of stairs right now. Now I think it's powerful enough to even compete in the flight of stairs. Because it has the power. And yep, I was kind of correct. Well, kind of. But here's the problem, it's just so low. Upstairs, we need to like. Yeah, we gotta pull it up. It kind of ruined the front. And if we adjust to inflation, this is like really expensive. So I wouldn't want to crash a hundred and forty thousand dollar car. stuck again. So we gotta like pull it up fully. All we had to do was just rev the engine up for better persistence. But here's the thing. The one that's in the air is actually getting power, not the one that's on the ground. That's the problem, and yet, and unfortunately, back in 1946, they did not find a solution how to do that. Nowadays, most 4x4s have like a solution where like it electronically like like sends power to like the one that's on the ground. I mean, if it was taller, I guess. No, let's just drag it up, shall we? Drag it up again, and then again, and then again. See, here's the problem. Like, you can't stay in high power. You have to, like, rev up the engine, and then it won't even stay in the high power. See, we're so low to the point where I'm consistently dragging the thing. Now I feel like this can be at least comfortable, com competent on something, some part of this part it will be competent. I know the other one, but I knew the other one is so underpowered that it's not going to be able to do it. But I feel like this is more competent of a car. Maybe if you got like the 10 minute car engine in here. It may have been a good car, but then I didn't want to like get the weight 
look like ignite extra weight, so that's why I made this engine. Top speed is like 87 miles per hour. It's like bugged. Oh, it's it's so. Uh, see, it has to go over a bump, and then it has to be over a bump on the other on the rear part. somewhere like the chassis is like, stuck it's super low this is why you're not going to go on Russia I feel like this is like the milk Goose 100 but way earlier I feel like this is like our Russian beetle why well, didn't keep from friend on friend and Porsche it came from like what Creators of Vlada. I feel like this is what would happen if Vlada took over um, Volkswagen. If they took over Ferdinand Porsche's um, 911, I think this is kind of what it is. Cheap parts, people's car, or they're gonna like fully tax it, meaning like they'll like, just make it like super taxed. stuck on its chassis. Like, clearly, this is so low that the chassis is being stuck. I don't know how long I can, like, do this. This is just trying to get a... I don't know, like, a friend that's, like, sad, still sad about his girlfriend leaving him. Like, that's how hard it is. No, I don't have the experience. But I can kind of imagine what it would be like. Oh god, now we got stuck on the ground again. Okay, now the downhill, the downhill part should be easy. You cannot screw that part up. The uphill, I guess, because it has like neither of like the power or like off road ability. But hey, we got it. Oh, we're up on stuff. No, no, yes, 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 yes. And we got that one. We got a lot of body work to do. Panels have been shaken. The front end, especially. The headlights. Back end feels okay. Side is just. No. No, let's see if we can go mud bog. The car is low, so I guess not really. Well, I will attempt trying to go in like a small mud bug. That's something. This ain't, this ain't even a mud bug and it's stuck. Drop it in there and like it'll be stuck. Yeah, see? Point of the car is to be fast, not to be off road. And see, completely submerged the car, so I don't think it's going to be. Is it a good car? Maybe. It gets like 15 miles per gallon. The Bugle, however, gets like the best. That's like the best car that Flux has made, like that, the best MPG. It has the best MPG. This is just the worst MPG. I remember I made supercars for like 20 miles per gallon. And like, cars that were able to go even 30 miles per gallon. Or even have engines that were more powerful and the cars were heavier. And they were able to go and get better gas mileage than this. And were able to be more um, complete. 
But hey, some magical force has lended it ability to fly in the air. Can be me. I mean, for what it's, what it's worth, I don't know. Let's just check the suspension. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is just another way to, like, I don't know, like, to do something when you have nothing? Maybe, but... To be honest, the car has nothing really to offer. Let's go to another car. I don't want it spawning on top, so I'm going to this one, the stock one. So let's go on the... I don't know, let's go on the 10 minute car. The Rotar H11. The Rotor H11 was built under 10 minutes, and it's a pretty good, com competent car. It cost fifty thousand dollars, but that's in two thousand. That's like in today's money, like fifty, like fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand, I think sixty thousand dollars. And like, to be honest, it has one hundred and seventy-six horsepower. But like, it's good enough to drive. It feels like you're actually driving somewhere, not like being stalled. Like, look, can this go 100 miles per hour? See, you got shaken, and then it gets smashed before it gets to 100 miles per hour. But feel how much, how fast this is, and this gets like 20 miles per gallon. Like, see, it gets to like a. It's able to go 100 as I smash into a wall. Suspension is like so good. It's able to go on every elemental strip except water. Like, every car cannot. No car has went on water. As we nearly missed water. See, look. That's like this costs like the base model of that. And this adding insult to an injury. Sure, it's not light, is it? But it has a compatible engine. So here's the thing. I want to mix the engine from here, put it in there, but keep the lightness. Of this, I want to keep it light. I want a light body like this. I want the engine of this because the engine is super good. It only makes 176 horsepower, yes, but still, it's a very competent engine. Like to drive, it's a very good engine. It has a good amount of torque. A good amount of like pick up and go. See this like I don't remember like this is like around like three thousand pounds, but like it's kind of like nimble. It feels more nimble, more on its toes. So let's get like a weight pad and check the two vehicles. I know I have increased the weight by just having like the engine to be a bit bigger. But here's the thing, I want the best for the cars. Like, I don't want the bad side of cars, I want to mix the good in good, and eliminate the cons. See, it's powerful enough to be able to at least go on the weak pad. See, in a BMG, it weighs like 1,800 pounds. Now, let's go for this one. This one weighs 2,100 pounds. So, I mean... Automation is not exact, to be honest. Like, like, 
basically, we need a car that's light as this, but powerful as the Rotar 11 H11. And so I'll just do a simple donut if I can to end up with this video. That's it for the for the SRM Cruiserworthy Sportsian. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you soon the next time. Bye, guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and please let me know what you build next.